so not to delay uh, anymore, let me just say that our previous lecture by Professor Marek Ozevic, some of you were here, uh, then was uh, held on the 23rd of February. Uh, and then the following day, on the 24th of uh, February, everything changed. And our meeting today um, uh, is uh, on, on the uh, 57th day uh, of uh, Russian, Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Uh, is uh, devoted to contemporary Ukrainian children's literature, and it's meant to express our solidarity uh, with the Ukrainian nation and our absolute condemnation of Russia's aggression against Ukraine, which constitutes, of course, man among many other uh, things, an attempt at destroying Ukrainian culture. And um, I strongly believe, and I'm sure you, you share this conviction, that Russia will never succeed in achieving this, this goal. Uh, and we are very grateful to um, uh, Professor Tatiana Kaczak of Vasil Stefanik Prikarpetian um, National University in Ivano Frankivsk uh, uh, in Ukraine for agreeing to join us uh, today in these difficult times and circumstances and to share uh, her expertise with us. And we are very grateful also to, of course, to um, uh, Dr. Mateusz Świetlicki um, from the University of Wrocław, a member of our center, for sharing his work uh, and for leading the conversation with uh, Professor Kaczak. So Mateusz will uh, introduce Professor Kaczak in detail, and he will also comment on his own uh, research interests and expertise um, and his collaboration with uh, Professor Kaczak uh, related to Ukrainian children's literature and culture. So Mateusz and Tatiana, teams is yours. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Justina, for this uh, kind uh, introduction. Um, hello, everyone. I have the honor and great pleasure to introduce my dear colleague, Tatiana Kaczak, who is uh, a children's literature scholar working at the Vasil Stefanik Prikarpatian National University in ivano frankivsk Ukraine, as Justina has already mentioned. For many years, Tatiana has been researching Ukrainian literature for children and young adults using a variety of theoretical approaches. She has published a number of textbooks and book monographs, including Ukrainian literature for youth, uh, for children and youth published in 2018, trends in the development of Ukrainian fiction for children and young adults at the beginning of the 21st century, international literature for uh, children and many others. Um, Tatiana has published numerous articles about Ukrainian fiction, nonfiction, picture books and poetry. Um, and Tatiana is a longtime member of IRCL and I have had the pleasure um, to collaborate with her on numerous projects throughout the years, including an upcoming book chapter on the role of children's literature in the Ukrainian school canon. Tatiana has kindly agreed to join us today in the discussion on the research on children's literature in Ukraine, which has become a thriving part of Ukrainian literary studies, the national and international impact of Ukrainian children's books, state support programs and reading promotion, the most important genres and books for children of all age groups. Most importantly, Tatiana will also discuss new topics and trends in Ukrainian literature for children and young adults and try to explain the specificity of Ukrainian literature and its transcultural character. Uh, good evening, dear colleagues. Today, at this difficult time for Ukraine, I would like to thank the Center for Research on Children's and Young Adult Literature at the Faculty of Letters of the University of Wroclaw, as well as the International Research Society for Children's Literature for the support. Thank you for amply condemning Russia's invasions of Ukraine, a southern country, and the brutal war waged by Putin and his government, which has claimed thousands of innocent people, including children. Scholars like Timothy Snyder have described Russia's invasion as another genocide committed against Ukraine and Ukrainian culture. We are fighting for our freedom, democracy, universal values, and the opportunity to be a free people with a distinct culture, literature, and traditions. We are paying too high a price. Several thousand civilians killed, more than 200 children destroyed cities, villages. I want to truly thank you for the opportunity to talk about contemporary Ukrainian children literature and raise the issue of its integration into the global discourses on children's literature. As Mateusz has already mentioned, 
Research on children's literature is a thriving part of Ukrainian literary studies. Before discussing Ukrainian children's literature, I would like to introduce you to other scholars working in the field. Studies of contemporary Ukrainian literature for and about children are multifaceted and multidimensional. From sporadic consideration through critical receptions of individual works and writers to theoretical generalization to in-depth analysis using a variety of approach and methodologies. This is facilitated by the domains of philological rather than pedagogical approaches to literature the development of Ukrainian and translated literature, strengthening of public attention to the importance of children's reading, the development and promotion of books for children, the interest in the practice of international studies on children's literature and the implementation of their experience in Ukrainian literary criticism. Access to global research and transnational perspectives on children's literature is vital in our post-colonial society. Many works on various aspects have appeared in Ukrainian literary criticism. I would like to briefly mention the most eminent scholars of Ukrainian children's literature. Emilia Ohar explores children's books as a literary and publishing phenomenon. Vitalina Kazilova, Lilia Ovichuk, Irina Boitsun, Olesya Slezhuk, Natalia Deviatko, Olga Kutsa, Larissa Kutsa, Olga Kupriyat explore the artistic specific themes and genres of Ukrainian children's literature. Ulyana Baran, Olga Papusha, Katerina Zaitseva analyze children's literature through the prism of narrative theory and communication theory. Natalia Marchenko studies biography for children interprets uh, the work of writers using a combination of biographical and other approaches. Bogdana Saluk works on the issue of comparative literature and explores the typology of images of the main characters. Lydia Mozelko bekerska develops theoretical issues of interpretation and poetics of text for young readers. Oksana Panko conducts receptive analysis of children's literature in comparative uh, perspective. Yulia Komanska Smile offers interpretation of children's literature using the theoretical framework of environmental criticism. Next slide. Mateusz Svetlitsky and Katarzyna Jakubowska Krawczyk analyze contemporary Ukrainian literature for children and young adults using the perspective of postcolonialism, memory, gender, and queer studies. Helena Reyes' population is working on the problem of depicting violence in Ukrainian children's literature as well as uh, conducting comparative research. Marina Vardanyan analyzes emigrant Ukrainian children's literature. I have to add that the Ukrainian Research Center of Children's and Youth Literature organizes annual conferences and symposiums. They have become a platform for communication and discussion of scholars, libraries and writers. The center publishes a collection of uh, articles titled Literary Literature Children's Time. Despite the growth of interest in Ukrainian children's literature, Many books and topics remain unexplored, while some multidisciplinary approach it to the study of literature as an artistic, aesthetic, and socio-cultural phenomenon have not been applied. I am sure that this is uh, this is a near the prospect, and such studies will appear soon. Notably, in the last few years, the work of Ukrainian scholars has appeared in international collections and journals, including children's literature in education. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Tatiana. I agree with you that it's worth noting that contemporary Ukrainian literature for children and young adults is of transcultural appeal mostly due to its diverse characters. Uh, local authors explore a variety of artistic and thematic approaches. They experiment with the genres and style. Uh, they create complex textual and visual narratives for all age groups. Children's literature illuminates Ukrainian national traditions while remaining universal and inclusive. It raises current issues that may be of interest to children from all around the world. 
Uh, yes, you're right, Mateusz. Uh, Ukrainian literature is no longer ideological. Uh, clothed in the uh, socialist, realist framework that took place in the middle of the 20th century in the totalitarian society of the Soviet Union. However, even then, the literary tradition of ideological and biased children's literature, uh, especially in the diaspora, was maintained. Yeah. Hence, uh, it is uh, not surprising that publishers for other countries and interest uh, in issuing translation of Ukrainian children's literature. Ukrainian books uh, have been awarded at uh, international book exhibitions and included in the well-known ranking of the best uh, publication. Yes, that is true. Uh, let me say that children's literature has become one of Ukraine's most outstanding cultural export products. Despite the initial dominance of low-quality Russophone books in the early 1990s, the emergence of multiple high-quality publishers issuing books by renowned and upcoming writers and illustrators prompted a significant evolution of the Ukrainian book market, especially noticeable in the last decade. Uh, between 1996 and 2013, 11 Ukrainian books received uh, the prestigious White Raven label given by the International Youth Library in Munich, including one published in Ukraine but written in Russian in 1997, and two translations from Danish and English. In comparison, during the subsequent six editions, 16 Ukrainian books were awarded, including crossover works by mainstream authors like Taras Prohashko, and Tanya Malarchuk, and new illustrated editions of canonical texts by Alessia Ukrainka and Ivan Franka. Looking at the awarded books, we can see that while many forms and genres are represented, picture books and illustrated books have been met with particular critical acclaim outside of Ukraine. Among the most interesting ones, which Tatiana will discuss later on, and I'll help her, uh, are Who Makes Snow by Taras Prohasko and Mariana Prohasko, um, which was uh, published in 2013 and which has been translated into many languages, including um, Slovak. Uh, and most importantly, in the context of the current situation, Binasho's Mila Rondo, How War Changed Rondo, a picture book by Romana Romanishin and Andriy Lesik, which we will talk about later. Um, so th this book um, was recently named one of the best picture books of 2021, compiled by Kirkus uh, Reviews. I think this is worth mentioning. Yeah. In recent years, the right to publish Ukraine books abroad in other languages have been sold by Vesel, uh, Vivat, Ababa Halamaha, Rana, Globry, and others. To be interesting to foreign publishers, a children's picture books must meet one of three parameters, and best of all three, uh, says uh, globally Olha Cherepanova. The book is already successful in its country, its author illustrators are successful, have a good uh, reputation and they're recognizable in the world. The book is a work of art, it impresses and uh, amazes. Yes, yes. And due to their visual and textual complexity, combined with universal appeal, Ukrainian picture books have been translated into several languages, including English, German, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, Portuguese, and Polish, and published in places Ukrainian literature is not usually distributed. Considering the critical acclaim Ukrainian children's books receive, it is not surprising that more and more mainstream authors want to cross over by writing for younger readers. Together with the Ukrainian Cultural Foundation and public organizations, the Ukrainian Book Institute organizes special programs promoting the translation of Ukrainian books. And we will mention some of these books. We will say a few more things about them later. Today, during the war, uh, when there are many Ukrainian refugees in different countries cooperation between Ukrainian and international publishing houses has intensified. In time, we believe that we will witness the integration of Ukrainian children's literature into the global cultural space and the growth of scholarly interest in it.
it is worth noting that literary uh, literature entirely occurs as a cultural and artistic phenomenon when it is re read. No matter how excellent a book is, it will never become popular when it is not read. That is why the books pass from publisher to the reader in modern conditions depends on government programs to support domestic books publishing, children's reading promotion, providing contemporary books to libraries, the active work of librarians, and various exciting projects at the national, regional, and international level. There are many such programs in Ukraine. Uh, one more applied direction in the organization of children's reading is to involve students and various projects aimed at promotion modern children's literature. This uh, workshop, weeks of children's reading, competition, flash mob, programs, projects, events of the network of libraries for children and youth and public organization. In Ukraine, the Ukrainian Research Center of Children's and Youth Literature uh, implements project All Ukraine uh, Re Reads to Children, Creative Interactive Reading, Multilingual Reading. Uh, in recent years, the uh, All Ukraine Children Reading competition Knehomania uh, for reader age 12-14 uh, uh, held within the uh, published forum has gained considerable popularity uh, as well as various authors project. Uh, Silver Reader's Book by Evgenia Piroch, Literary Cavalierka by Tetiana Kachak, Winter and Literary Reading by Oksana Prusilkova and others. Uh, on the screen, uh, you see photos from the game presentation uh, literary cavalier. Uh, we would like to move to a short overview of contemporary Ukraine literature for children and youth, uh, which is an uh, artistically and aesthetic original. We may argue that is, um, it is a socio-cultural phenomenon that has been formed over the past 30 years. Ukrainian literature is based on traditions and innovation caused by several factors. Uh, active development of book publishing for children of all age, publication of uh, high quality books, artistic, aesthetic, functional and thematic uh, values, well known uh, and uh, critically acclaimed uh, authors write for children and young adults. Uh, this is important uh, in the context of artistic quality of reading. Debutants are also actively involved. Uh, this is important in the context of uh, novelty and experimentation at the level of uh, content and form of text and uh, illustrations. A new school canon is being formed in which a significant share is occupied by com contemporary literature specific specifically addressed uh, to young uh, readers. Recent decade uh, campaigns to um, promote reading literary competitions, um, awards, projects and state programs to uh, support reading. The work of the Ukrainian Institute of Books, uh, Libraries, Translation Grants. Uh, active cooperation with partners uh, from other countries, translations of new international books into Ukraine, and vice uh, versa. Ukrainians uh, participate in uh, Euro European and World Book uh, events and reading project, uh, participation and book uh, exhibitions, competitions, and programs such as uh, All Poland Reads to Child. Next slide. Mm, more than uh, 60 Ukrainian publishers uh, have issued books for children and young adults over the past 20 years. Until the late 20th uh, century, the published house Veselka, Rainbow, uh, was the only one uh, specializing in children's literature. It had been operating since uh, the time of the Soviet Union. In the 1990s, uh, another one, Ababa Halamaha, uh, was established. Since the beginning of the 21st century, dozens of other publishers have been actively issuing books for children. In recent years, a wide range of high-quality books uh, have been offered by the Old Lion uh, Publishing House, Ababa Halamaha, Vivat, uh, and others. Since 2016, Academy has been issuing YA books. There are also other notable publishers such as Thesis, Urbino, uh, Time of Masters, uh, Black Sheep, Vedavnitstvo, uh, and others. 
popular trends in children's books publishing are determined based on the following criteria. Uh, relevance and quality of text and illustration, uh, popularity among child readers, uh, distinction of the book in competitions, uh, ratings, and also positive responses, reviewers, uh, critics, uh, promoters. Uh, we want to briefly mention the most important trends on the Ukrainian children's book market in the last 20 years. It is uh, also worth noting which writers and illustrators uh, are authors of the books. Mateusz? Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you. It is no coincidence that we want to start with uh, Romana Romanesian and Adri Lessi's already mentioned picture book, which is addressed to a wide range of readers. Uh, devoted to the topic of war, it is more relevant than ever. So now it is more relevant than ever. It's relevant in every corner of the world. Um, how War Change Rondo promotes the idea of uh, that fighting against evil is possible only when people are united. Kindness and respect defeat evil. The authors themselves emphasize in an interview that this publication is not about a specific war, but about how to perceive such events in general, how to fight the war, how to finally win it. Despite the fact that the ideas and symbols found in How War Changed Rondo represent Ukrainian culture and realities, for example, Ukraine as a prototype of Rondo, the floral theme in the book is an allusion to Maria um, Primachenko's painting, Be Damned War, Bombs Grow Instead of Flowers. But the picture book is universal. This picture book is universal. Hence, it should come as no surprise that it has been published in many countries. It has been translated into many languages. Most recently, as I've already said, it's, uh, it's been um, um, met with acclaim in the US. Um, it will also be issued in other languages soon, including German. Interestingly, um, this picture book has been called a therapy book. Um, even a cartoon uh, based on it uh, um, has been created. And as I've already said, it has been critically acclaimed. It was among the winners of the Bologna Regazzi Award uh, in 2015. Um, uh, it received a special jury award in the New Horizons category. Uh, it was the winner of the, uh, of the Lit Action uh, Book of the Year. Um, award in the category Poetry and Prose for Children and um, the 2021 uh, translation into English uh, was named uh, one of the best um, illustrated publications uh, by Kirkus uh, Reviews. Books that harmoniously combine quality text and illustration have always been a trend in children's literature, especially for the youngest. I would like to say not a few words about books uh, directed at the youngest, that is, uh, picture books, ABC books, female books, uh, collection of children's poems, fairy tales, or family reading. Uh, picture books. Uh, next slide. Uh, publication of this format have long been uh, recognized in other countries. In Ukraine, however, this niche has long been ignored authors, publishers, critics and readers. Fortunately, this has uh, changed as a lot of quality picture books have been published in the last decade. Picture books perform uh, essential cognitive, educational and developmental uh, functions. In addition to the aforementioned book, A Whole World Change Rondo, there are also other works by Romanesian and Lassiv, also known as Art Studio Agrafka. Yes, uh, let me say a few words about two wonderful uh, picture books, which can be called cognitive picture books. These are um, I See That, which was published in the US as Sight, Glimmer, Glow, Spark, Flash and uh, Loudly, Softly in a Whisper, which was published in the US as Sound, Shh, Bang, Pop, Boom. And I have these books in here. As you can see, the US covers are uh, very different from the original ones. Uh, so I see that is a cognitive picture book about sight and the fact that you can see the universe not only with your eyes. Loudly, softer in a whisper is about hearing, about sounds, but also about silence, about voice, um, about the sounds we hear, about the sounds we do not hear, about how important it is to listen to one another. Um, 
also how important it is to listen to the nature surrounding us. Um, notably, uh, these books together won the Bologna Ragazzi Award in 2018 at the category nonfiction. Uh, when it comes to Arturia Grafka, Romanesian and Lessi, uh, let me say a few more words. Um, so two other picture books we, which um, Tatiana recommends and I also uh, recommend are uh, Where and From Where, which was published in 2020. It's a picture book about movement, about travel, not only of people, but also animals, plants, wind, water, uh, about our planet in general. And finally, my uh, personal favorite, uh, Stars and Poppy Seeds, which is a picture book about a girl named Dora in the English translation, Flora, who loves math. It's a book for children um, from nine, from age nine to 11, 12. Uh, this book was one of the winners of the Oprah Prime nomination for the Bologna Ragazzi Award in 2014. It was the first picture book by Ukrainian authors to gain international recognition. And I highly recommend it as it challenges gender stereotypes. Um, I'm glad to say that it is available in English and you can uh, you can um, order it now. Um, I would like to draw your attention uh, to the informative picture books for, uh, by Oksana Bula, who is the author and illustrator of uh, Christmas Tree Birthday. It is a book about how Strukoni, a forest creature, takes care of trees born in the summer, making sure they grow up and uh, strengthen before winter. But there is one uh, special Christmas tree that is born in winter. Her birthday is everyone's birthday. Such picture books treat uh, kindness and the importance of uh, caring uh, for others. Bula's picture books have been translated into other languages, including German. Oksana Bula with Katrina uh, Mikhailitsina published another picture book titled Who Grew Up in the Park? This is a story about trees that grow in the park, but also about growing and finding yourself, about the similarities and uh, differences and the importance of uh, having someone around you who is at least a little bit and somewhat uh, similar to you. Most picture books are intended for family reading as they involve a dialogue between the reader and the book and between the child and the parents' teachers. So parents and educators can talk to children about different topics. It is an effective means of helping children develop imagination and cognitive skills. Today, nonfiction books are especially popular, a lit literary genre as it combines the informative value and uh, encyclopedias uh, and an exciting style of teaching uh, traditional fairy tales to children. ABC books are uh, next slide, thank you. Uh, ABC books are addressed to the youngest readers, uh, of which there are many Ukraine. The alphabet, compiled by Ivan Malkovich and illustrated by Kost Lavro, Ababa Halamaha, has become iconic and is published uh, annually. Uh, an exciting series of cognitive ABC encyclopedias from A to S about prominent Ukrainians, uh, namely Taras Shevchenko, Ivan Franko, uh, I. Andrei Sheptitsky, and Andrei Sheptitsky uh, was published by VSL. Uh, next slide. Ukrainian poetry for children in the 21st century is written by uh, poets like Ivan Andrusyak, Yuri Bedrek, Vasily Holoborodko, Mikhail Grigorev, Anatoly Kachan, Helena Kerpa, Oksana Lushchevska, Helena Malik, Ivan Malkovich, uh, and others. They are included separate books published by Hranite, Veselka, and collections of favorite poems Ababa Halamaha. Uh, next. Uh, Slide, uh, fairy tales and uh, cognitive stories for the youngest children and for family reading. Several publishers are worth mentioning in this category of book. Uh, Zinka Manzatyuk book uh, I'll Cook You Borscht uh, is a beautiful illustrated book of fairy tales that uh, introduce children to authentic Ukrainian dishes, borscht, vareniki, compote. With the main characters Olesa and Ivas, the readers learn about the features of these dishes uh, and the variety of the names. Yes, it's a beautiful book, uh, highly recommended. 
Um, let me say a few uh, words about a book which I have, which we have already mentioned, Who Will Make Snow by Trust and, and Mariana Prochaisko is part of a fairy tale trilogy about moles. Uh, Prochaisko is one of Ukraine's most critically acclaimed authors. Together with his wife, um, he worked on Who Will Make Snow, Where the Sea Disappeared, and How to Understand a Goat. These are tales about a family of moles and their 13 children. Uh, the books explore the themes of adventure, friendship, miracles, travels, and trans and intergenerational collaboration, solidarity. Uh, the trilogy has been met with positive reception. Um, How Will Make Snow won the BBC Book of the Year Award in 2013. Uh, it received the Lit Accent of uh, Book of the Year Award uh, in the category Poetry and Prose for um, Children. It was also included, as um, we've already said, in the White Ravens catalog in 2014. Uh, these stories are fantastic for children of elementary school age, uh, but let's move to books directed at older readers. Uh, so now Tatiana will um, talk about selected stories, uh, fantasy adventure stories, biographical fiction, nonfiction, fantasy, um, and science fiction stories, uh, and many, many authors. Tatiana, please. Uh, fairy tales are uh, traditionally popular among child readers. The best uh, editions, three volumes of Ukrainian folk tales, edits by Ivan Malkovich and publishers by Ababa Halamaha, and illustrated by the best illustrators uh, of Ukraine. Of uh, particular uh, interest uh, are Christmas tales, uh, semantic. Next, uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, collections of literary tales, uh, Christmas tales by Bogdana Matiyash, fairy tales under the pillow, uh, new tales under the pillow, and Aunt Malva Shop by uh, Sasha Dermansky, and other stories. Uh, Helena Kerpas, my dad became a star, became a landmark in the category of realistic stories for children aged 7 to 12. Illustrated by Oksana Bula, it can also be uh, regarded as uh, picture books. Uh, my Dad Became uh, a Star is about the uh, 2014 revolution of dignity. The story is told by girls uh, whose father died. The author speaks metaphorically about death. You can read more about the book in our uh, works. Mateusz? Yes, yes. Um, fantasy adventure stories uh, have also become popular in recent decades. Among their most famous and important authors are Halina Malik, uh, Lesia Voronina, and Sashko Dermanski. These works attract the attention of readers with stunning events, uh, heroes who oppose evil creatures, sorcerers, fictional monsters. They contain motifs of transformation, magic, and extraordinary power. And of course, the authors often use humor. So uh, these are really great books, and, and most of them, unfortunately, have not been translated into English. It is worth paying attention to encyclopedic uh, publication and non-fiction. These are cognitive books about people, uh, the activities, uh, gender label, guides, uh, geographical, historical, encyclopedias, for example, the uh, travel book Ukraine and the uh, history of Ukraine's independence by the Caprano Brasi. It is also published in English, the combination of illustration, text, uh, comics, uh, in an uh, uh, interesting way tells uh, children uh, the history of Ukraine. Uh, Non-fiction. It uh, is a section we have uh, chosen three books that have uh, received uh, wide uh, acclaim in Ukraine. First, Larissa Denisenko book, uh, Maya and Her Moms, broke uh, stereotypes about taboo topics about same sex and single parents' families. Last week, the book was published in English. You can read more about uh, it in Mateusz's article. You are called. Another interesting book was uh, written by Ukrainian fashion designer Oksana Karavanska and illustrated by Anastasia Stefurak. Uh, a stylish book for a little lady was received uh, positively by both children and adults. In illuminance Ukraine uh, fashion tradition and contains exciting tips about uh, style and uh, expressing individuality. 
it has been analyz uh, analyzed by Mateusz. A separate group uh, is formed by uh, journalistic, artistic, uh, scientific books about famous people and their discoveries. The most exciting books uh, are by Julia Smile, Interesting Chemistry and Less a Story, uh, Experiment and Find Out. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you so much. Thank you for mentioning my uh, my, my publication. Um, yeah, finally, we want to say a few words about the thriving category of books for teenagers and young adults, which includes a variety of genres and forms, including um, psychological novels and fantasy. Um, based on the analyses of contemporary Ukrainian literature for teenagers and young adults, we can determine the general trends in its evolution. So first, active and multidimensional development of fiction, the variety of themes and genres, the increasing artistic and aesthetic quality, inspirations from international writers, the evolution of the functional aspects of the literary text, meaning um, the rejection of didacticism and ideological involvement, combination uh, of tradition and innovation, and focus on the child and intergenerational and transcultural solidarity. Due to the dynamics of the sociocultural processes and the formation of a new generation of readers, in the last decades, this segment of the Ukrainian uh, book market has changed. Realistic and adventure fiction remain the most popular, but we would like to point to the rapid growth in the quality and quantity of socio-psychological fiction and problem novels. Other subtrends include thematic depravity and quite problematic gender labeling of texts. Seems of childhood children's uh, imagination and um, graving up uh, socialization of children um, uh, traditionally common in fairy tales, stories, and novels by Ivan Andrusiak, Lesia Mubchun, uh, Zirka Menzatyuk, Helena Pahutiak, Sergei Hredin, Maria Morozenko, Oksana Dushterska, Olena Rishko, and Azeb. Uh, inclusive seems um, the problem of communication between individuals and uh, the world uh, unfold in the books 140 Decibels of Silence by Andrei Bochinsky, uh, Butterflies in Ice um, Shells by Oksana Radushinska, The Story Tram Number N by Andrei uh, Masluch, and the book. Uh, uh, Head and Veil by Katrina Babkina, the collection of short stories Terra Inclusion and uh, Aze. Deeply psychological, um, existential, rooted in uh, Christian and family history is a recently published novel Zvinka Matiyash by name, My Name is Barbara. Contemporary Ukraine fiction for teenagers and young adults is characterized by tendency to overcome semantic taboos. For example, the theme of death and suicidal. Next slide. Uh, there is a growing interest in works of art in which, uh, in addition to the adventure story of the presence of young people, various fields of knowledge are uh, represented physics, uh, chemistry, art, uh, and philosophy, uh, such as, for example, Andrei Boczynski books uh, with uh, Einstein in uh, Backpack and uh, Triangle of Zeus. The military themes has its tradition in the history of Ukraine literature for children. The tradition of Rirtitunek, Viktor Bleznets, and Mikola Vingranovsky is a continued story memoir of Volodymyr Rutkivsky about lost childhood, Poterchata. The uh, urgency of uh, articulating uh, the problem of children and war is due to the realities of Ukraine today. Russia's uh, aggressive invasions of Ukraine, uh, that was that uh, he's been going on uh, since uh, 2014. Uh, this is a book we talked uh, about uh, how war changed Rondo, uh, as well as uh, created during uh, the 2022 by Larissa Denisenko's book, Children of uh, Our Alarms. Yeah. Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, let me say a few words about a book which we believe you should all definitely um, read. Uh, it's called Letters on the War. This is a, a very, I think, fascinating example of 
intergenerational uh, collaboration between children and uh, and adults. So this is a book which was published in 2015, so right after the uh, Revolution of Dignity. Uh, so uh, as you can see in here, uh, it um, can, uh, it is uh, a book filled with letters written by children. Uh, and also, um, uh, so which have been translated into English. So it's a bilingual uh, book, and you can download it uh, from Amazon. Uh, a Kindle edition, I think, is uh, currently on sale. But I think we, we both uh, believe that it's of uh, great importance also in the context of uh, the present-day war. And uh, I just want to add that... Um, Anglophone readers uh, can learn a lot about Ukrainian history and culture from books written by diasporic authors, um, most notably Ukrainian Canadian authors like Marsha Project Skripik. Um, and uh, Skripik uh, is the author of seven uh, World War II uh, themed novels for young readers. And in early September, her new book, Winter Kill, uh, about the whole Domor, so the great famine, uh, the man-made famine uh, from 1932-33, um, uh, will be published in, uh, in September. So we highly uh, recommend uh, reading these books. Uh, unfortunately, Ukrainian, um, Ukrainian uh, fiction for this age group uh, has not been translated into English, but there are uh, books um, written by diasporic uh, authors, which you definitely um, can read or should read, we may say. Importantly, in the last few years, books about childhood and child lives under the Soviet totalitarian regime right before the collapse of the USSR have been published uh, Barbarians, uh, Windbreak by Stepan Prutyuk, How I Destroyed the Empire by Zirka Menzatyuk, Farm by Olena Zakharchenko, uh, and uh, other books. Uh, works that uh, reason the past of Ukraine raise issues of national orientation, uh, spiritual revival of the national traditions, uh, religion and uh, customs of the people, national um, identity, uh, cover historical events, uh, especially the, the war uh, silence, um, distorted, uh, interpreted for ideological positions, depicted and uh, rehabilitation national heroes clearly post-colonial, historical and adventure fiction by Volodymyr Rutkivsky, Maria Morozenko, Oleksandr Haurosh, Yaroslav Yarish. Uh, in 2021, the fantastic novel Wind Mountain by Anna Bahriana was issued and was met with acclaim. Uh, this is a typical Ukraine fantasy with elements of mythology. Uh, at the present states, uh, the two most uh, wide, widely represented areas of realistic fiction for teenagers and young adults are socio-psychological and school novels. In socio-psychological works, there are characters whom the readers may see as real. The authors of such books uh, emphasize the main characters' psychology by attention to their inner world uh, behavior and um, relationships with society. Of course, school novels are um, a staple of international children's and uh, YA literature. The anal analysis of the historical um, dynamics of the genre of Ukraine school story shows the modern writers pay more attention not to adventure, but to the uh, psychology of the characters. The school story often raises a very uh, relevant issue of school bullying, prominent in international young adult literature. Helena Reis and I conducted a comparative study about the presentation of this topic in Ukrainian and Australian young adult literature. Finally, let me say that the genre of the biographical story has children has been gaining popularity. Usually, there are uh, books uh, written in the form of a diary story with, with experience, uh, ex expressive elements of uh, autobiography, uh, to some extent uh, similar to the Dear Canada and Dear America series, which Mateus wrote about. We believe that the most valuable of the genre is a book by Natalka Maletic about the eminent Ukrainian writer Lesya Ukrainka because it combines biographical history with modern and uh, attractive publishing solutions. Uh, next slide. Um, 
in the last decades also fantasy and science fiction uh, have gained popularity for uh, instance Volodymyr Aronyev, Natalia Dovhopol, Helena Reis. To conclude, I'd like to say that together with Mateusz, with, uh, we believe that the international uh, readership will be interested in the picture books of Agravka Studio and Oksana Bula, fairy tales uh, by Bogdana Matijas, Zirka Manzetiuk, uh, stories by Helena Kerpa, Olga Kuprian, adventures works by Sashko Dermanski, Lesia Voronina, Volodymyr Rutkivsky, Andriy Baczynski, Oleksandr Haurosh, realistic story by Zvinka Matijas, Olena Ryszko, Nadia Bila, detective stories by Andriy Kukutyucha, fantasy by Volodymyr Arenyev and Natalia Dogopol, Helena Reis. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, I'm sure this is just the beginning of our discussion on Ukrainian children's literature, and there will be many questions and many comments. Thank you, Mateusz. Thank you, Justyna and the Sente. Together with Mateusz, I will try to answer the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for this fascinating journey uh, all over. Uh, the Ukrainian uh, children's literature, this incredibly rich uh, book market, the formats, the, the genres, uh, so so beautiful, so um, so diverse. Yes, there is a question from uh, Ekaterina, uh, please. Uh, hi, um, so my question is, are there any topics that are still uh, taboo or uh, raise controversial uh, thoughts uh, in literature for children in Ukraine? And Mateusz, we can't hear you. Uh, sorry. I'm so sorry, Tina. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for this great question. Tatiana, would you like to address it? Um, if, if you want to, you can use Ukrainian and I can tr translate it into English if, if that is better. Я так зрозуміла, що запитання йшлося про табу в українській літературі так. для дітей. Так. Зараз найбільше табу – це, напевно, напевно ну, от, якісь такі питання е, сексуальності, е, це гендеру, е, тому що е, є така традиція і, зрештою, наша література в цьому плані дуже традиційна. Хоч, як ми побачили книжку Лариси Денисенко і про це писав Матеуш, е, такі книжки теж уже є. So, uh, Tatiana says that, uh, of course, the most controversial topic uh, is still uh, connected to gender and sexuality, like in many other countries in the region, and not only in the region. But um, Tatiana has also um, said that uh, this has slowly, uh, this has slowly been changing with the appearance of books like the Nisenkos, Maya and Her Moms, and also um, I can add that in other um, Ukrainian books, there are certain, let's say, non-heteronormative elements, at least, uh, at least some hints. So, um, yeah. But, and, and I think that Tatiana is absolutely right. And if I uh, were to add something, I think that uh, there are still um, few books about Ukrainian history. I'm talking about the Holocaust, World War II, the whole Domor, books for children, of course. I'm talking about books for children, which are, um, there are many Ukrainian Canadian books about this topic, but there are no Ukrainian, practically no Ukrainian books about this topic. Thank you, Mateusz. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much uh, for the question and uh, for the answers. Uh, Helena is, is going to ask a question, but there's a question in the chat as well. Uh, first, uh, uh, Helena, I hope you don't mind, uh, from Justyna Mentrak from the University of Wrocław. And Justyna says, uh, thank you so much. Why are Ukrainian novels for teenagers so rarely translated into other languages? You could address this, please. Czemu ukraińskie pierwitkowe romany rzadko przekładają inżynne mowy? Я думаю, що найближчим часом це зміниться, тому що до недавна, до 2011 року, наша реалістична проза була досить слабкою. Зважаючи на те, що в радянські часи підліткової літератури як такої не було. Підлітки читали дорослу літературу. Але зараз вона розвивається і ми маємо якісну літературу. So, 
Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, so um, Tatiana has just said that uh, until 2011, you, Ukrainian uh, literature for for teenagers, for, for young adults, was not really of high quality. But in the last decade, this um, has changed significantly. So she hopes that uh, there are, like new translations uh, will uh, appear on um, like new translations into various different languages. Um, but she also says that until uh, the 90s uh, or even early 2000s, there were no um, YA books in, in Ukrainian because in the in the in Soviet Ukraine uh, this category did not exist. So children read or young adults, teenagers read books for adults, which is I think uh, very important. It, it's of great importance. Okay, thank you very much uh, again for the question and for the answers. Uh, Helena, please. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Um, so yeah, thanks for the beautiful lecture. It was amazing. It was uh, great to listen to it. Very inspiring. Now I feel like translating some books uh, from Ukrainian into English. And um, I just wanted to, um, yeah, to support uh, Tatiana's point about the taboo literature. Uh, so yes, we still have some taboos in Ukrainian literature as everywhere. Uh, however, we can see how those taboos are, like how we have less and less of those taboo topics and how the borders of controversial topics are crossed all the time. And just to what Mateusz was saying about uh, books, um, featuring Great Famine uh, called Holodomor. Uh, recently, it's a very recent publication, I believe just this year, uh, we've had a picture book published about Great Famine in Ukraine uh, called Skrenia, the Chest by Katrina Yagoroshkina. It's a very recent publication. Um, and yeah, I'm sure more books like that will appear. Thank you, Helena. Uh, Tiana, Mateusz, would you address this comment, please? Thank you, Helena, for, for this comment. And, and you mentioned translating the books. Uh, uh, I, we hope that you will also write new books because uh, as uh, Tatiana has mentioned during uh, her our talk, uh, Helena is also an author of YA literature. So thank you, Helena, for your, uh, for your uh, comment. And we're looking forward to reading more of your wonderful work, which should be translated into English, of course. It is right. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Tatiana agrees. Uh, I can't see any more questions in the chat and no uh, hands raised, but I have a question if I may. It's more about um, uh, teaching uh, Ukrainian children's literature culture more broadly at universities. Are there many courses for students, graduate, undergraduate uh, at, at universities? You could comment maybe on, on, on that. I muted myself once again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, I, I was thinking maybe you're waiting. <laughs> Who's going no. to start? Okay, sorry. No, the question about the situation of Ukrainian literature in the university. I want to ask you, what courses you have in literature literature? Maybe you can ask me. Я викладаю, курс, я викладаю курс «Дитяча література і методика літературного читання» в університеті для майбутніх учителів. У нас у кожному університеті, де готують педагогів, є дитяча література. Матеуш? So uh, Tatiana uh, has said that she's been teaching uh, children literature at the university level for, for many years. And um, at all universities specializing in uh, pedagogy, so, you know, educating future teachers, there are courses on children's literature. So these are, um, um, these are not elective courses. These are courses that all future teachers have to take. Okay. Uh, it is yeah. integration. Uh, це є інтегрований курс, який mm -hmm. включає українську дитячу літературу, світову дитячу літературу і методику літературної освіти у школі. Oh, so interestingly, uh, such courses combine Ukrainian literature 
with international literature, uh, children's literature, and also uh, methodological methodological approaches. And and, um, uh, and and during these courses, classes, children can, I mean, future teachers uh, learn how to teach uh, children's literature in the classroom. Ми вивчаємо історію кожної національної літератури від початку до кінця і глибше аналізуємо сучасні актуальні твори, які є в перекладах українською і які вивчаються у конкретних класах. Польська література, німецька дитяча література, англійська дитяча література, американська, італійська література Скандинавії і, звичайно, українська література. Це зміст літературної освіти. So, um, um, Ukrainian students who want to become teachers have to learn a lot about world literature. Uh, Tatiana mentioned um, uh, German literature, Polish literature, uh, Italian literature, um, uh, Swedish literature, Scandinavian uh, in Nor um, Nordic literature. Um, so uh, the, while uh, in the in the uh, syllabi, there are works from different time periods. The focus is on contemporary, um, on contemporary literature, which is mm -hmm. obvious. Mm -hmm. And there are some more questions I can see. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, first uh, question uh, from uh, Natasha Audrey Anderson, please. Um, thank you very much. Am I coming in loud and clear? Yes. Uh, yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, first of all, thank you for this very fascinating presentation. It was a great joy to have such a broad and exciting range of books introduced. And um, my question was regarding your um, comment on thematic differences between young adult and adult books. Are there any mutual influential trends, such as adult literary topics becoming incorporated into young adult literature or vice versa, that young adult literature or children's literature at times can influence adult books to then take up such themes as well. Thank you. Oh, that is very, I think that's a very good question, a very uh, thought-provoking one. So um, in what ways uh, young adult uh, literature influences um, books for adult readers and vice versa. So obviously, um, um, the, obviously, there are more and more adult topics in YA literature, which is, I think, a universal trend, and it's pretty obvious. Uh, but I'm, if if I were to um, to say m more about books for adult readers, uh, I would have to think about it um, some more. But um, of course, there are child protagonists in, in books for adult readers. There are uh, young people in books for adult readers. There are teenagers and teenage pro problems in, in books for young readers. And I'm talking about um, Sergei Jadon's fiction. I'm talking about Oksana Zabushka's fiction. Tanya Malarchuk, for, I think that's a good example. Tanya Malarchuk is a Ukrainian author, and I know that one of his, her books have been translated into English, um, a biography of... Uh, Oh my goodness, uh, Chance Miracle, that's the English title. Um, it is a book about a girl, uh, it's a coming of age story um, uh, filled with magical realism, but it's definitely not a YA book. Um, so I think that at least to some extent, uh, there are certain links and there is this transfer of topics between, between these um, two very different types of literature, yet quite similar ones. You know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Should I add something? Would you like to add anything? Вы хотите все сказал. Вы все сказали. Не згадали Жадана. Да. Okay, we have we have more questions. I think Jennifer, am I right? Jennifer? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, first of all, for such a wonderful presentation. 
I have a long list of books that I want to um, buy for myself and for our library here in, in Dublin City University. My question was about the way that the books have been translated and reproduced, particularly some of the texts that you mentioned that were challenging gender stereotypes or ones that were, um, you know, rejecting didacticism. And, and I wondered whether the complexity of these works was holding true in the translation or were they, um, you know, manipulated in some ways uh, for the implied child readers? That is a very good question. Uh, so you want us to talk about translations into other languages or translations from other languages into Ukrainian or just uh, translations of adult topics into children's literature? Can you specify? Uh, that? We'll try to think, address it. Well, all it would be very interesting, but I suppose primarily from Ukrainian into other languages okay. and how how okay. how they how the, the merit or the, the complexity of the works um, translated across or was kept or not? Uh, I can I can say a few words about Eng English translations, about translations into English. Fortunately, all of these books have been published by uh, good publishers and uh, these have been translated by really good translators. For example, Howard Chintrondo was translated from Ukrainian by Oksana Lushevska. Who is an author and a scholar. Uh, these two were translated by Vitaly Chernesky, um, who uh, is a wonderful scholar specializing in post-colonial literature and queer uh, studies. Um, so uh, these are books of really high quality. Um, I, I can uh, I can uh, confirm it. Uh, and but the question you've asked about gender. In these books, there's no real mention of gender. I mean, you know, gender always exists, obviously. But these books do not focus on um, gender or, or things which uh, may be difficult to translate, I think. Uh, the only, I think, interesting um, choice is the one which uh, Luceska had to make um, while translating uh, Stars and Poppy Seeds. So she had to change the name of the... Um, main uh, protagonist from Dora into Flora. But I think that is pretty obvious why. Because she kind of does look like Dora, the explorer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think, I think that's why. Um, that's probably why. But translating, you're absolutely right, translating books from, uh, from Ukrainian into other languages is, um, can be difficult because Ukrainian is gendered. It's very gendered, just like Polish. But if it's possible tr to translate a book from Polish, or from Russian into English, why not from Ukrainian? You know, Spanish is also gendered, isn't it? So I think that there are problems, there are numerous different problems, but um, we can always find solutions, I think. Tatiana, would you like to... Uh, yes. the system? Uh, so oh, bilingual books that are now actively used uh, for children of migrants. Uh, there are mostly books uh, for young readers, uh, picture books. Oh. Oh, so there are also many bilingual books, yeah, which is interesting. So we can compare, if you're bilingual, you can compare these translations, yeah. Thank you so much. I Thank hope, you, that, we, and, I hope um, that we managed to address this yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure <laughs> you have. There's a question uh, from uh, Justyna uh, Mantrak again. Uh, I will read it. Uh, it's in the chat. Uh, do you have any ideas how to encourage Ukrainian children to read Ukrainian books? If I may add to this question, I was wondering during the lecture um, whether you have the same phenomenon that we have in Poland, that there is a decline in reading altogether, right? Not, not just among children, but altogether there are those, uh, you know, studies saying that uh, Polish people uh, read uh, less and less. So Yustina is asking about, about um, encouraging children to, to read books, uh, promoting literature, as she says, uh, including children's literature is one thing, but as an unprepared teacher, I'm observing a trend among Ukrainian children I'm working with that they are more willing to engage with Russian literature, if any. I'm a scholar of both why literature and Ukrainian studies, and I'd love for them to explore the beauty of Ukrainian books, but it feels hopeless at times. And, but there is a smile at the end of the comments, so maybe not that hopeless. Mateusz, maybe you could help. Wow, wow, 
Wow, that's a very long and complex yeah. question. Um, uh, so, uh, Tatiana, um, czy je u was idei, jak um, zaochotyte ukraińskie dzieci czytate ukraińskie książki, um, propagowate literaturą w tym czasie i dzieciaczu, co nie, ale jak um, uh, nieprzygotowlenej pedagog, ja spostrzegam um, serę ukraińskich dzieci, z jakimi pracuję, tendencję, że one ochotnie zajmują się rosyjską literaturą. Uh, jak co je? Ja doświadczyk i literatura znawiec i Ukraina znawiec i ja bym chciała, żeby one doświadczyły, doświadczyły um, cudowną ukraińską literaturę, ale czasem to beznadziejno. To zapytanie. Sorry, przekład po prostu żachliwy, ale ja. Dziękuję, dziękuję Justyna. Ja dość zrozumiała i mnie dużo przykro. Дуже прикро, тому що у нас донедавна засоби масової інформації, російські мультфільми, діти ростуть в такому середовищі, російські ігри в гаджеті, і тому ну, десь це наша проблема. Але не всюди, це напевно залежить і від регіону. Тому що от в західному регіоні, де я живу, є дуже активна промоція дитячого читання, і вони читають українські книжки. Але це е, фактично залежить від регіону. I think that I don't have to translate it uh, for Justina, but I have to translate it for uh, for all the people who are present here. So, uh, first of all, uh, Tatiana believes that it's such a shame uh, that feel, she feels very sorry to hear that. Uh, but this is very regional, of course. So, in Western Ukraine, where she is based, uh, children um, read Ukrainian literature, they watch Ukrainian films, and um, and um, and. And it's it's very regional, so it all depends. Um, it all depends from which region uh, the the children are. But uh, she would also like to highlight that all children in in Ukraine are required to study Ukrainian literature, and they're required to study the Ukrainian language. Uh, so this is, I think, more. We believe that it's, I think, uh, more ideological because all children, um, Ukrainian children from Ukraine, speak Ukrainian, even those whose preferred language is Russian. This is something that I added. Thank you. This is our problem. This is uh, the problem of our educational policy. Uh, we hope that everything will change after your victory. Yeah. After, after this yeah. war. Yes. Thank you. We have two more questions. Yes. The question from Smiljana. Smiljana, please. Uh, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you for this uh, terrific uh, lecture. We, we, we have really been able to see how rich your uh, literature, children's literature now is, and it is more the pity that we don't have more translations into other languages too. It is definitely something we would need to, to initiate and, and, and try to do it at a larger scale. Well, my question is concerning um, translations. Uh, well, uh, of uh, international classics, actually. Now, because international classics uh, tend to be parts of every children's literature, uh, regardless of the nationality. And uh, uh, have you noticed uh, a number of new translations in more recent years of old international classics? Because this is something that's happening in Croatia, for instance, that we had some translations rather early, some rather late, but then uh, we have in recent 20 or 30 years many, many retranslations. So I, I was wondering how is it, because you know, all the translations sometimes tended to be ideologically changed uh, to, to, to fit uh, the, the political and uh, ideological situation. And then we, we've had a lot of new translations. Okay, that is my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I can start uh, because I know a thing or two about it. <laughs> yes, there have been new translations of old classics into Ukrainian, including Anne of Green Gables. Uh, good translations uh, from the original languages, not from Russian, because for many years the translations into Ukrainian were translations from not from the original languages, but from Russian. 
So as you have uh, um, as you have noted, these translations were ideological, but the new ones, the ones which have been appearing on the Ukrainian book market in the last twenty years, but in the last decade especially, have all been very good translations, great quality translations by uh, authors, um, uh, scholars specializing um, in, children's, uh, in children's literature and in liter literary studies in, in general. So uh, I can say that, yes. And also, I'm very happy to say that in the last decade, a lot has changed in Ukraine. So um, you, uh, there have been many translations of new classics, you know, of new popular books, Harry Potter, um, uh, the Hunger Games, really high quality translations. Uh, for example, Harry Potter, uh, one of the volumes was translated by, um, co-translated by Sofia Andruhovich, who is a renowned um, Ukrainian author um, of uh, books for, for uh, adult readers, serious, so-called serious, you know, literature. Uh, but the translations uh, are very good, very high quality. Tatiana? Я зрозуміла, що йдеться про переклади, і вони дійсно якісні, так. і це переклади класики і сучасної літератури. У нас є перекладачі, які працюють з скандинавською літературою, це Галина Кирпа, Ульф Старк, це є переклади. У нас є перекладачі, які працюють з німецькою літературою, це як класика, так і сучасні твори. І навіть поезія, яку складно перекладати. Зокрема, ми маємо цілу збірку французьких поетів, класиків, які писали для дітей. Це іронічна поезія, що має свою специфіку. Yeah, so Tatiana added that there are uh, translators specializing in, in, uh, in certain, let's say, part, parts of the world and certain languages. So translators specializing only in German literature, only in Swedish literature. Uh, and uh, there have also been really good translations of poetry. Uh, especially uh, from French into Ukrainian, and to, yeah, and Tatiana has mentioned how difficult uh, translating poetry uh, is. Uh, in uh, in this collection, which Tatiana mentioned, this francophone originally francophone collection is a very high quality. The translations into uh, into Ukrainian are of very high quality. Варто зауважити, що це переклади з оригінальної мови, yes. а не так, як це було, скажімо, у 20 столітті і перекладали з російських перекладів цензуровані. Yeah. And exactly so what I've already said. So these are translations from the original languages and they're not translations um, from 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 Russian. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the question and, and yeah. for the answers. And there's a question from Natasha Audrey, please. Yes, I hope you don't mind if I ask another question. Um, so this time I would want to ask on this topic of translation. You had mentioned beforehand that humor plays a major role in adventure stories, yet humor can also be challenging to translate just as poetry. Can you share with us examples of humor in Ukrainian children's literature? And have you examined changes or challenges in these translations? Thank you. Translate this, Mateusz. <laughs> Natasha, <laughs> Natasha, Natasha uh, thank you for another very thought-provoking question. I think that your questions are like uh, article ideas. So in order to answer them, uh, I would have to really spend some time thinking and rethinking and reading. So the, the answers, um, which uh, like the previous answer was very brief, and this one will also probably be very brief because of the complexity of the question. Uh, so um, the, the examples of humor, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Translating humor can be very difficult, but it's possible. Think about um, think about Pixar and and Disney films, uh, which uh, have been translated into practically all languages. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, humor used by Pixar or Disney is very um, Anglophone. It's very American sometimes even. Uh, it's very local. But uh, when you listen, when, you wa when you're watching, let's say, um, a Polish version, you know, a Polish translation of um, a Disney or a Pixar movie and a German one and a French one, uh, you can notice uh, how creative the translators uh, have to be, and somehow 
all of these translation, uh, translators managed to make this very local humor work. And I think that is also possible in here. So what's the difference between translating films and translating um, literature? Of course, there are many differences, but uh, I think that more or less the methods, um, uh, the, the means uh, a, transla a translator is using are pretty um, uh, similar. So it is possible to introduce certain um, changes, especially you know when it comes to children's literature, which is supposed to be humorous. Um, I think that the, the I cannot give you any examples. Maybe Tatiana uh, Tatiana um, can, but uh, I think that um, references to Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian food, Ukrainian traditions, um, all of these um, creatures from the folk tales, which may not be uh, you know familiar to, to other readers. Um, I think that that may be um, uh, a problem. But at the same time, if it's possible to translate The Witcher and turn it into a very successful video game and a very successful t uh, Netflix series, I think, and it's a very, I think, a local text as when it comes to very different things, I'm using a Polish example, then I think that translating Ukrainian books, uh, which are humorous, is also possible. We just need good translators, I think. Yeah, Tatiana. Я не знаю, що я можу тут додати. Напевно, можливо, варто згадати ще переклади Джереміа Стронга, англійського письменника, який вважається у нас ну, найбільш таким гумористичним письменником. І це такий типовий англійський гумор, але він зрозумілий українським дітям. Якщо перекладати, правильно я розумію, Матеуш, так? Угу. Якщо перекладати українські книжки, то там теж є своя специфіка, але я думаю, що треба ну, добре відібрати їх для того, щоб цей гумор був зрозумілий міжнародній аудиторії. Yeah. So Tatiana agrees with me, and she uh, also added that uh, some uh, translations of uh, English classics with this so-called traditional English humor, uh, uh, so these translations into, into Ukrainian are very successful and very good. So if it's possible to translate uh, British humor, which is, or English humor, which is very specific, let's say, <laughs> then it's also possible that in translating Ukrainian humor into English uh, is also possible. So that's what Tatiana added. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll have to write an article about it, maybe, or a book chapter, and then you'll learn more. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I think uh, Helena has commented in the chat, but I think you have addressed that, or that has disappeared, the comment? I don't know. I okay. Uh, oh, sorry for that. I can't yeah, see. I, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Sorry for that. It's just, um, yeah, sorry. I, I wanted to comment something, but yeah, it's a very complex question. So I definitely agree mm -hmm. with Mateusz and Tatiana here. Um, and yeah, it can be really difficult to translate from like examples of humor from any language into any language. Uh, but of course, it's possible. It, I, I would say, like, I would be with Tatiana here saying that translating poetry is probably the most challenging case of translation. And trans because when it comes to translating humor, we need to find equivalence, but we don't need to think about rhyme and rhythm and all those things, which can be very different if languages differ a lot. Yeah. From my own experience yeah. of translating from English into Ukrainian and Ukrainian into English. Yeah, but there is also nonsense poetry. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Which is even more difficult, I think, to translate, don't you think? If you want to make it work, of course. Hmm? Uh, is are there any more questions? We still have time for one uh, question. Yes, Kenneth, please. Hi, everybody. Thank you for a fantastic presentation, really informative. Oh, and my cat's visiting right now. OK, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> You had mentioned um, that the importance of, uh, of government support for, for publishing and for funding. So I'm just curious, is that something that is really critical for the industry? Is there more commercial activity that's not being subsidized uh, by the government, by the publishers? Just curious about that relationship. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, запитання про державні програми підтримки. І чи можемо декілька слів сказати про програми? Про підтримку зараз. Фактично, за останні роки підтримка видавців була... Український інститут книги підтримував видавців. Щодо підтримки за кордону, мені невідомі такі програми, але я знаю, що є гранти на переклади. Тобто на друк перекладів українською мовою класики зарубіжної, так, і зарубіжних сучасних письменників. So, uh, so uh, in the last few years, uh, the, the government uh, has been very supportive when it comes to literature. And Tatiana has mentioned that there are grants for translations um, from from Yes. international literatures and from uh, Ukrainian into other languages. Um, and I just want to add that when it comes to uh, the, the book market, that there are publishers who are uh, commercially uh, successful, let's say, who did not need this type of support, like the, so the outline publishing house, uh, which um, is probably the now I think it's the biggest um, Ukrainian publisher. So a lot of their books have been translated um, into other languages and uh, a lot of their books have been commercially successful. But also there are smaller publishers like uh, Black Sheep, Chernovivca um, and many others who uh, I think have been struggling in the last few years. And these are also publishers specializing in um, the so-called difficult topics, you know, the taboo topics. Um, so like Chornavica, yeah? So um, some publishers need support, some publishers uh, don't, which is a good sign if you don't need any type of, you know, governmental support in order to, to operate, you know, to, to publish books. So there are such publishers, but others definitely need support and, and, the support, and this type of support has been granted by the Ukrainian government. Насправді, ми не знаємо, що буде далі, тому що на найближчі роки Україна буде відбудовувати все і вже не будуть виділяти кошти ані на друк підручників, це все буде в електронному варіанті. І е, очевидно, що всі ці кошти, які були закладені, скажімо, щорічно, Інститут української книжки поповнював бібліотеки у сучасними українськими книжками для дітей. Зараз цього вже нічого не буде, тому що ви розумієте цю ситуацію, в яку втрапила Україна, але ми знаємо, що є пропозиції закордонних видавців підтримати і надрукувати уже готові книжки для наших мігрантів. Я знаю, що це є в Польщі, це є в Німеччині. Uh, so, of course, we don't know uh, what the future may bring because of, of the war, uh, but uh, Tatiana um, has mentioned that uh, the, there will be no, unfortunately, there will be no support because of the complex sociopolitical situation because of the war. Um, and normally, every single year, the Ukrainian Book Institute um, provides uh, all local school libraries with the latest um, Ukrainian children's books, but this will no longer happen. Uh, all of the textbooks uh, will um, will not be printed. They will, um, children will, will study using uh, e-books. Uh, but um, fortunately, um, certain organizations abroad, including Poland and Germany, have offered to help Ukraine, help Ukrainian um, um, publishers. So they will uh, publish, they will print uh, books which already exist, you know, so they will uh, pay for the printing of uh, these books. And these books will be printed in um, in uh, in Poland, Ukraine and, and, and other countries. I know that even in Wrocław, uh, there are um, uh, NGOs um, um, who've been trying to, to help Ukrainian publishers now. Yeah, so we don't know. Come with me. But I'm sure there will be uh, efforts, international efforts, to support uh, Ukrainian yes. um, book market more broadly, not just children's literature yeah. book market, or culture more broadly. Yes, that's why translations are very important, especially now. Mm -hmm. Translating wonderful books from Ukrainian into other languages is of great importance. Okay, I think it's time to uh, finish. Uh, unless there's maybe one more question, or I can't see any. 
for your last chance. Well, I have some more, but maybe I want I don't want to delay you. Um, maybe that that's for later. Uh, but thank you very much, uh, Tatiana and Mateusz, for um, sharing so uh, so many details, uh, so much information uh, with us. Uh, and um, as I said, we hope that. Uh, well, I am certain that um, also our meeting uh, is just a small, let's say, particle uh, in in this kind of international support that uh, will follow. Uh, I'm sure for Ukrainian culture. Uh, thank you once again, and thank you all. Thank all of you. Uh, big thank you for attending. I think that's the biggest uh, turnout that we've had, Mateusz. Uh, I think yeah, we don't have in a while. We yes, never yes. had a bigger audience. So thank you yeah. very much once again for being here. Um, yeah, there are uh, lots of comments in the chat uh, saying thank you. Yeah. Thank, so you, again, thank, thank you, Yustina. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Yustina. Thank you for 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 moderating, for introducing us, and for uh, coming up with this idea. So um, thank you, Yustina, a lot. And I think that it's well, that would be impossible to... without you, Matos. So, <laughs> and the support of our center. Uh, so, thank solidarity. You. solidarity. Thank you, Matos. Thank you, Justina. Uh, thank you very much for this interesting meeting. This is a light during the war. Thank you for the support of Ukraines. Slava Ukraini. Slava Ukraini, Heroyan Slava.